Hello, this is Card Life, and I just want to tell you a little bit about a haul I got today, uh, yard selling, and it's sports cards and collectibles. They're a little bit technical. A lot of people tell you to stay away from them, and for the most part, they're right. But there are some ways to make some money doing it, and I want to show you how. All right, we're going to start off by going over some of the baseball and sports cards. They're difficult, uh, but there is a way, if you're spending the right kind of money, to make money doing this. Now, I spent $150 on this whole tote and a couple extras, and some home decor items as well. So I'm going to start with some of these cards. If you're ever out and about and you see these cards with these borders, the blue, the white, the red, these are 1986-1987 Flair Basketball. This is one of the most sought-after sets in the world. It's the Michael Jordan rookie year. If you see a Michael Jordan, be careful. If it's not graded, it's probably fake. But these other players typically aren't faked very often. Uh, or, you know, if you have some experience, you can kind of tell. But these are good, so we're going to go over it. This is a rookie card of somebody not very good. That's like a $4 card. Thurman Thomas, 1989. This is his rookie. That's probably like 5 bucks as well. Some of these are second-year cards. These are 87, 88 Fleer. Uh, these are rarer than the colorful ones here. Um, and you get the right player, it's worth a little bit of money, but they didn't have a lot of good rookies, so I'd stay away from that set in general. But these are worth a little bit of money. But let me go over some of the good stuff here. Steve Young. This has a couple uh, Steve Young rookie cards. It used to be worth a little bit of money, but now they're probably about five to ten piece a piece on them. So I'm going to go ahead and sell those. Here's a Isaiah Thomas, 86, 87. So this is his rookie card. Used to be worth a little bit more. The market has softened. Now what's what you're going to notice with cards is people typically overprice them because the market used to be huge, but now the market's you know a lot um, smaller now. But there's still some money to be made. So this is about a twenty dollar card. This is his sticker rookie. This is about 10 so that's maybe a $30 bundle. Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, Philadelphia Eagles. That used to be an expensive card. That's about 5 bucks a piece now. Here's an autograph, Gil McDougal from the Yankees. If you're looking at autographs in general, stick with Yankees, Red Sox, big teams. If you're buying lots like this. Joe Dumars, this is a rookie, another good card. You're also going to notice... Um, the edges and stuff are very important on these cards. Very, very important. Um, it could take a card worth like this that's worth about 8 or 10 bucks, and make it a $30 card just based on the kind of condition it's in. These are 1960s cards of Carl Yastrzemski, Her Herman Killebrew. In general, you want to be very careful with these. You'd think they'd be worth a lot, but honestly, these are a couple dollars a piece. These are going to go in my booth because uh, they'll probably sell a little bit better to the antique audience than actually on eBay. Here's some Frank Thomas rookies. Not worth a ton. Here's another interesting thing about baseball cards. You'll notice like some of the modern stars who are kind of entering, ending their career right now, uh, they started 10, 15, 20 years ago. Their rookie cards actually can hold a lot of value. This is an Albert Pujols from 2000, not super old, but it's worth easy about $20 shipped on eBay. So that's cool. Old Gary Carter. A whole bunch of, I mean, you're going to find a lot of Mark McGuire stuff when you're going through lots. Usually not worth a lot of money. Um... There's a whole bunch of other cards in here I'm not super concerned with. There's some money to be made on, on some of these, but it's not why I bought them. I'll lot them up, or I'll even send them into a place called ComC, which is a consignment store that uh, is on eBay, and you can send it into them, and a lot of these cards are worth a buck or two apiece. They'll post it for you, take a commission. You don't have to deal with some of the minutia of the small stuff. Here's another small box um, as well. I just kind of separated some of this so you could see it easily and learn some stuff here many of you guys who have seen baseball cards know who this is this is a mark mcguire now this is what his rookie card looks like but you see this gold stamp right here these are reprints so i got a bunch of the reprints i wouldn't be that excited about those but there's actually some real ones in here as well now you see this reprint the back here's a real one 1985 this used to be back in the day 20 years ago 100 plus dollar card now in this condition, you'll get about 10 plus shipping, maybe maybe eight plus shipping. Um, and I got a few of them, let me show you. There's another one, and um, I think there's another one floating in here, I got a few. Barry Sanders rookie card, this is 1989 score. If you ever see these old 80s football cards and they're in these colorful borders, there's gonna be a Troy Aikman, Deion Sanders, Barry Sanders, these are the rookie cards from the late 90, 80s to get. In general, you wanna be careful with those, but if you're getting them at the right price, you can make some money. Like I said, I paid 150 for everything, this is about a $20 card. Here's some other rookies from that year from him. Not as, as valuable. They're worth a couple bucks a piece. These are really interesting. Now, in general, some of you guys may know about baseball cards. They're numbered. These are numbered to 10,000, which is not good in general. Nowadays, you could find cards low, as low as one of one, one of 10, you know, stuff like that. 
and those have a little value, but these were the grandfathers of all the numbered cards to 10,000. These are called the Elite Series, and they still hold their value. These guys are, you know, not Nolan Ryan, not King Griffey Jr. Ricky Henderson was a pretty good player. But these cards still hold their value, about 30 bucks, about 35 bucks for that card. Um, whereas some of the newer cards that are 101, numbered to 25, they could be worth nothing. So some of these old cards, if you see that they're numbered and they're from the 90s, are valuable. Another thing you want to notice with some of these older cards is autographs. Now, autographs are great. So here's another one of the Mark McGuire's in the nice case. I'll probably sell it with the case because that'll add some value. Here's a, here's a cool, interesting thing about autographs. This is Don Larson, Hall of Famer, New York Yankees. His autograph right now, because there's so many autographs out there, has gone down in value quite a bit. It used to be worth, you know, probably 50 bucks plus. And, and his modern cards are now worth about $10 autograph. But the interesting thing about this is this is a $30 autograph. It's not numbered or anything, but the reason why it's worth $30 is this autograph came out in the 90s. This is in 1999. Back then, to get an autograph card, it took you boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes to find them. Now every box has several autographs, but back then it was hard to find them. So a lot of these sets from the 90s, if they're autographs, even if they're not the best player, uh, they have a little value. And if they're a good player, they have an extra value compared to what they used to. So be careful. Have knowledge about it. Here's another interesting quick thing about baseball cards. A 1984 Donruss. Very rare set. Uh, it doesn't hold a great amount of value, but there's certain cards, and if the condition's right... They could be worth a little bit of money. So there's just some of the cards I got. So bear in mind, $150. I should make a lot of that money back just in those cards. Now, here's another interesting thing from this sports collectible lot I got is starting lineups. In general, starting lineups are about 5 bucks a piece. You can put them in an antique booth or maybe you could sell them 5 6 $7 plus shipping on eBay. But this guy had decent taste. He had good players. Bo Jackson, super popular. This is a 1990, I believe, or 1991. It's about a $20 one, maybe 15 plus shipping. Thurman Thomas, not quite as good, but still a pretty good star from back in the day. That's maybe 10. Um, Joe Montana, in pretty good condition, everything. 1991, that's probably about 15, 10 plus shipping. Um, Icky Woods, the Icky Shuffle. We got uh, David Robinson, which is pretty good. Let me uh, be careful with these real quick. This is a sports talk game. This is actually back in the day. You would uh, put your cards in here, and it's got a couple cards, and it would talk to you. Not worth a lot. I just threw it in, maybe ten bucks. Um, here's some more card. Or, I mean, more starting lineups. This is, uh, I think, another Thurman Thomas. So I got two of those. Um, Barry Sanders, Hall of Famer. Jim Kelly, and Nolan Ryan. Here's a card and a guy that's kept his value really good over the years. Nolan Ryan. Obviously, you can find his rookie cards from the 60s, but all of these number cards, autographs, toys like this, they hold their value where they could be anywhere from still five, six, seven bucks all the way up to hundreds of dollars if you get the right card. So Nolan Ryan's a good one to look out for. King Griffey Jr. still does pretty well as well if you're out here. Here's some other stuff that I got from this lot. A couple unopened boxes of baseball. Now, a lot of these, when you get these unopened, they call them junk wax era cards. They're not worth a lot. But there's a couple things to notice with this. And the main thing is it's 1989. 1989 is the year Ken Griffey was a rookie. That is uh, one of the most important players in hobby history. Does not make this particular brand worth a ton. If it was Upper Deck or something, it'd be worth a lot. But these boxes went from maybe a $5 box to about $10 a piece just because of that. So these are maybe $20.25 on the low end plus shipping. So that makes it uh, not worthless. And then I got a couple other unopened boxes of stuff that's not worth a ton. But this is... 93 Studio, I'll put those together for about 15 bucks plus shipping. Um, here's some more starting lineups, Ricky Henderson. There's a couple other stuff that was really obvious that I found in here that was good money. Um, here is a plaque with the holy grail of, grail of when I was a kid, which is the King Griffey Jr. rookie card. Upper Deck, which is the one that's worth a lot of money. If you ever see this card out and about, just for a raw, non-graded version, you're looking at about $30. Um, with this plaque, makes it kind of cool, I'm going to ask about 50 um, but that, that still holds a lot of value. Some other obvious stuff that this uh, lot had. This is Alex Rodriguez autograph. Um, it should say on the back that it's authentic and everything. But this came out of uh, Studio, which made some 8x10 autographs that you got as box toppers when you open the box. Luis Gonzalez, he's pretty good, but he didn't really hold his value, unfortunately. There's a lot of other uh, knickknacks here that I will be putting in um, my booth. A couple more unopened boxes. Some open boxes. This will go in my booth. This is a little Muhammad Ali Wheaties box. We got some bobbleheads. 
These didn't really hold their value like people thought they would. 70 home runs, Mark McGuire and everything. Um, and then we got some couple uh, Wheaties boxes. But this is just a little idea of how you could make some money doing sports cards. It's tricky. It's one of my specialties. It's what I started doing when I was a kid. I was 12 doing shows and stuff, and it got me into eBay, which I do a lot of now and I love. But, uh, you know, just the starting lineups were looking 50, 60 profit, and the cards were looking at a couple hundred. And then a whole bunch of stuff for my, my booth as well on top of the eBay stuff. So I just wanted to show you about that, that you can make money selling sports cards. It's difficult, but I'd love to show you more. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help. Thanks.